There is nothing worse than seeing the code you wrote two years ago. Huh. Tweet. Hey everyone, today we will see exactly how to do this tweeting using voice controls. We will make a Python app that will constantly listen to your microphone in the background and immediately when you say tweet, it will tweet the last thing that you said on your Twitter account. So let's get started. Right, let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do, of course, as always, is to import the libraries that I need and some other things. So I'll show you what I need to import for this project. We will be using WebSockets. This will help us connect to Assembly AI's API. We will be using the asynchronous IO from Python. We will show, I show you how that works, but basically we want to listen to the microphone and at the same time, always send what we are receiving to Assembly AI's API. So that's why we need to use an asynchronous uh, IO uh, in the Python library. We will use base64 for encryption purposes or encoding purposes. And then we will also need uh, JSON to send, but also to understand uh, what we receive from Assembly AI. We will use Pi Audio to listen to the microphone. We will use Twython to make it easier for us to connect to the Twitter API and kind of use it. And lastly, we will need some configuration information. This includes the authentication key from Assembly AI and also some other keys from Twitter's API. So let's first set that up. For Assembly AI's authentication key, it's quite simple. All you have to do is go to assemblyai.com or you can use the link in the description below to get a free API token. Otherwise, you can just sign in to uh, sign up for Assembly AI. And once you sign in, you will get your API key here. And you can just click this one to copy it and just create a separate file that has all of these information and for your authentication key, paste what you just copied from Assembly AI. For the other keys, what you need to do is to create a Twitter developer account. So again, it's very simple. You can just go to Twitter developers on Google and just go to the first website that pops up. You need to create an account, as I said, and then we will at the end end up at the developer portal. You just need to create a app for your uh, Twitter API to be able to use the Twitter API. I've already created the app that I'm going to use for this application that I'm making, but otherwise you can go to overview, add a new app and just follow the um, steps that are in front of you. Once you create an app, you can go to the app settings and then say authentication setup. You can choose authentication 1.0 and then just choose what kind of permissions that you need for your app. So for this one, we're going to need read and write. We don't even need read so much. We mostly want to be able to post tweets on our Twitter. So we choose the second one and then you just need to create, uh, fill in some information of uh, what website that is going to redirect to and also the name of your organization or a name of your website, etc. Once you save this information, you're going to get the additional keys that you need. And then all you need to do is to fill in all those keys here, then you'll be set. Now that we set our authentication and our connections or generally the keys and secrets that we need for these authentication and connections, let's go ahead and start writing our code. The first thing that I need to set up is listening to the microphone. And as I said, we're going to use Pi Audio to achieve this. So for that, I just need to set up some parameters like frames per buffer, the format of the audio that I'm listening to, the channels and the rate. So you can just use what I'm using here, but important to note here that, that the rate that you choose here needs to be the same rate as the assembly AI endpoint that you're choosing. Uh, so I'll also show you what the assembly AI endpoint looks like. It's just basically a URL. And here we are choosing the real time API of assembly AI. So it will transcribe the audio in real time and the sample rate is 16,000, just as the same one we set up for Pi Audio. And then I'm starting a stream using Pi Audio and this stream will help me listen to the microphone and what is being said to the microphone. Next, I'm setting up Twython. So all you need to do with Twython basically to connect to it is to pass your configuration uh, information, including the consumer key, consumer secret, access token and access token secret. And using this from now on, we will just be using the Twython's uh, interface to interact with the Twitter's API. All right, so time for the actual fun part. So for this part, I'm going to be creating an asynchronous uh, function and it will be called C 
send and receive because as I said we want to uh, get what is being sent to the microphone send it to a somebody as API and then receive an input and to run this function of course I need to call it at the end of my Python script here the first thing that you want to do in this asynchronous send and receive function is to connect to assembly AI's API. And to do that, I'm going to be using WebSockets. So what I'm doing is basically announcing that I am going to try to connect to this URL that you, this endpoint that you uh, specified. And using WebSockets, I'm going to uh, use the authentication key. And if you need some other information, also include those here. But basically what we need here is the URL, the endpoint, the authorization key, the ping interval, and the ping timeout. So how long it should wait before it times out and uh, make a connection. After we set the connection, we try to establish the connection here. And if everything goes well, that means that we are ready to send the messages to Assembly AI's API. Next is setting up the function that will send the data to Assembly AI's API. It is quite a simple function. It's called the send function. We will use the while true loop to indefinitely run this. Uh, I will be using try and accept to make sure that if there are any errors, I'm able to catch them. But the main functionality of this function is basically here. What we're doing is we get the stream from the stream. We read the data, the audio data, and then we encode it into whatever we in the format that we need it in. And then we send it to assembly AI using the WebSocket that we have just created. This function only waits 0.01 seconds in between runs. And we achieve that using the await keyword here. Lastly, of course, we have to get information back from assembly AI's API. So what we're going to do is to have another asynchronous function that is the receive function. Again, it will run indefinitely. It will run all the time using the while true loop. Uh, again, I will be using the try and accept uh, keywords here to make sure that if there are any errors, I will be able to catch them. But again, the main functionality is here. So let's walk through this one. So at first, what I'm going to do is again, connect to the WebSocket and listen for any responses. And Assembly AI will always return responses to me with every word that I say. So maybe let's first understand what Assembly AI's response looks like. So I will remove all the other functionalities for now. So what I wanna see here is just a response and show you how, the, how fast the response actually happens. So if I just run my code here, Hello. One of the most annoying things is to have to read your own code and fix it. So basically what's happening here is assembly AI is constantly transcribing the audio that we're sending to it and it is sending us responses. And once you finish a sentence, it actually fixes the punctuation, adds dots or commas if it's necessary, and also capitalizes the important, the beginning of the sentence, or if there are any other words that need to be capitalized in between. So basically, this will be the final sentence that we get. And there is actually a way to understand which sentence is the final sentence. To understand that better, let's um, look at, into the result str, so the resulting string. This this is basically a JSON format response. So if you look at look into it, we will understand better what the assembly AI response looks like. But I don't want to constantly constantly see it because it's always going to be returning responses to us. So I only want to see that JSON response if the result is not an empty string. So let's run this again. Hello world. Okay, I can stop it now. So basically what you can see here is that when the result is not empty, it tells me or it shows me what the whole response looks like. So there are a bunch of things in this response. We have the when the audio started, when it ended, the confidence with which that it um, recognized this speech and this audio, uh, the text, so what kind of text or uh, words have been um, recognized in this audio. But also another important thing to show here is the message type. So as you can see here, it only says that this is a partial transcript. So it is still listening. The sentence is not done. And when the sentence is done, the message type turns into final transcript. And this is the one that we're going to use to tweet our sentences because we don't want to tweet out sentences that are half done. So let's see how we're going to do that. At first, of course, as I said, the main thing is to 
uh, filter out the sentences that are not final transcripts. So that's why I'm going to only take the ones that has a message type of final transcript. And I want to also print these results just to kind of, you know, have a sanity check so that I can see what they look like. And to tweet these out, we actually only need to write four lines of code. So to send a tweet using a Twython, it's very simple. We already created a Twitter variable using Twython here at the beginning of this uh, script. What we're going to do is to say update the status using the previous result. So here I'm saying previous result, but because how this app is going to look like is you're going to say a sentence. And then if after saying the sentence, you decide that it is Twitter worthy, you can say tweet. And that's why we need to keep uh, an eye out or keep in mind what the previous result or previous sentence that we said. So that's why in this uh, line here, I am saving the previous result or the result of this sentence to be used in the next uh, time the program runs as the previous result. So if the resulting transcript from this timestamp is tweet, if I just said tweet, we will look at the previous result. And if it's not empty, I'm going to update my Twitter status using the previous results. And I'm also going to print it out on the uh, terminal screen to kind of do a sanity check. So let's see if this is going to work. For this, I'm going to put my terminal screen right next to my profile on Twitter. So let me clear this first and then we can run it again. All right, so here we will see that it will transcribe everything I say but it will not tweet things yet because I am not saying tweets specifically on a single sentence. I can even refresh my page and then you will see that nothing has been tweeted yet. It's still my last tweet is from two hours ago. So let's try to tweet something. Let me think of something fun to say. You know, maybe I'm just coding by myself at home and I need to uh, fix some bugs in a code that I wrote like five years ago. Maybe I will say something like, hmm. there is nothing more annoying than to have to fix the bugs of a piece of code that you wrote five years ago. Tweet. All right, so it gives me the confirmation that it has tweeted the sentence. So let me refresh my page and see if that actually happened. Hey, yeah, and it is here. There is nothing more annoying than to have to fix the bugs of a piece of code that you wrote five years ago. As you can see, it has been posted just recently. So this is amazing. That means that it's working and you can see that it is still transcribing everything that I'm saying here. Uh, I hope it worked for you too. Let me know how it went in the comment section below. Hey, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give us a like and maybe even subscribe. We would also love to hear your questions or comments in the comment section below. But for now, thanks for watching again and I will see you in the next video.